Okay, lesson 4-4. Four -four. Adding and subtracting rational expressions. So a rational expression is a fraction. And so when you look at these kinds of problems, you have to remember that before you can add them together, you have to have a common denominator. So the first one there, it's even written for you with a common denominator. So just remember you add the numerators together and you keep the common denominator the way it was. So that's all you need to do on that one. The next one, it just depends. You notice, if you don't notice this right off the bat, one of these denominators is factored, one is not. If you did write them in the same form, then you see that they actually are the same denominator. I would leave them in the factored form at first because if we get a common factor with the numerator, then we're gonna simplify that out anyway. So my next step, 2x plus the 3x makes 5x and 1 plus a negative 8. 1 and negative 8 is negative 7. And so on this problem, I don't, that's not going to factor at all. So my final answer there is just the 5x minus 7. Again, I like the, I like the factored form in these and call that even more simplified. But this textbook seems to want you to put them in this sort of a form to call it simplified. So moving on from there, the least common multiple. So the least common multiple means like if I said to you um, two and five, the least common multiple would be 10. Both of these numbers will divide evenly into 10. If I said to you two, three, and five, now you're gonna have to get all the way up to 30. If I said to you, um, four and six, the least common multiple here is gonna be 12 because these each have a two that is a common. So if you divide two out of one of them because it's already in the six, then you could multiply these, something like that. So to find a least common multiple, what that's helping us with is if we have to get a common denominator. So we're going to check these first two. Well, this one's already all in factored form. This one is x plus 2 times x plus 3. So our common denominator here, if these were denominators or least common multiple, I have to have two of these. Now, because I've already accounted for this one in here, I don't need another one of those. I just need the x plus 3 now. So my least common multiple would look like that. If I made you multiply it out, I still think that's gross, but this book has a tendency to want you to do that. You'd have to take this and multiply it by this. So you'd have something like your x squared times your x. For my, I'd have a 2x squared and a 4x squared to make 6x squared. For my x's, I'd have an 8x and a 4x to make a 12x. And for my plain number on the end, I'd have that four times two or eight. So if, if they wanted to multiply, I still like the factored form. It seems like it's very user friendly, but um, this next one, x cubed minus nine x, factor out the common x, factor that difference of two squares. Um, Factor this as your x minus 5x plus 3. And then this last one, factor out this x. All right, so any of those that are unique factors, we have to have in our least common multiple, which if we had these all as denominators, that's what we'd have in our denominator. So we have to have a common factor of x. Got it, check. We've got to have an x minus 3. Got it, check. I've got to have an x plus three. Got it. And then last but not least, I've also got to have this x minus five. I'm going to say right now, I'm not gonna multiply that out. 
because that just looks kind of gross. If you have to multiply it out, I mean, the way I like to do these would be multiply these two together, and then multiply these two together. And then if you wanted to make a rectangle, for example, multiply them out, combine your like terms, and you could have your uh, at least kind of multiple in the standard form. So then take that concept here and let's find our common denominator, which is the least common multiple. Factor the denominators. This one is a difference of two squares, always factors like that. This one, uh, let's see, x minus 2 and x minus 1 multiply to a positive 2 and a negative 2x, negative 1x add up there. So my, my common denominator here, what is missing in this one that the one on the right has? The x minus 2. So then we have to multiply that over itself. Anything over itself is 1, so it's going to look different, but it's going to be worth the same amount or have the same value, so to speak. And then the second one, what's this one missing that was in this common denominator, the x plus 1? So if we're going to add, multiply that on here to get our common denominator, we've got to multiply it in the numerator as well. So we're multiplying by something over itself, which is another name for one. Expanding out this first one, I would have x squared plus x, the three x and the minus two x, and a three times negative two, negative six. And then plus this one expanded out two x plus two. Combine your like terms. I'm going to leave the denominator in the factored form as long as I can because sometimes I'll get one of those factors in the numerator and I can cancel it and simplify it if I do. So the numerator and my x squared, um, I've got this x and this 2x, so I'm going to have a th plus 3x. And then I have a negative 6 and a positive 2 to make a negative 4. So if I look at that numerator, that kind of feels like it might factor. Let's try it here. x times x equals this x squared. A plus positive 4 times a negative 1 would make this negative 4. And 4x minus 1x does make 3x. And then, indeed, as I told you to watch for, what happens right here with this x minus 1 over this x minus 1. So our final answer here is x plus 4. If you're going to multiply this out to have it like this book likes, foil it. That would be x squared minus x minus 2, I believe, for your final answer, getting a common denominator, at least common multiple, and then factoring and simplifying. One more here. Actually two. We're going to get to a compound fraction here in a minute, sometimes called complex fraction, where you have fractions inside of fractions. So let's see. This denominator here, I'm thinking eight my, x minus 8 and x plus 2 would do it there. And the second denominator here, and x plus 4 and an x plus 2. So to get my common denominators, um, this one is missing the x plus 4 that's in the other. And then this one will be missing the x minus 8 that's in the first fraction here. So I've got to multiply this by x plus 4 over itself. So I'll I'm keeping the value of the fraction the same. I'm going to need to multiply this one by the x minus 8 over itself. 
Now, be careful here. This is the most common mistake, is this minus has to go on everything in the second fraction. So in the second fraction, when I multiply this out, I have x squared minus 8 plus 1 would be minus 7 x and then minus 8 and then in the first one foiling this one out I would have in here um, x squared plus 5x plus 4 and then my denominator still has all those same things that were up above the x minus 8 the x plus 2 and the x plus 4. Now, combine our like terms in the numerator. See how I had those parentheses to help remind me that this minus goes on all these things. Sometimes you'll even see people do this. I'll change it to addition and then change the sign on each one of these things. That's another way, instead of subtracting, add the opposite of everything in there to help make sure you don't miss something. Um, let's see, our x squareds, those cancel each other out. 5x plus 7x, so 12x, and 4 plus 8, there's a 12, and we still have all those things in the denominator. And then this numerator doesn't look like it's going to factor for us this time. Uh, we could factor out a 12, but we'd have an x plus 1, but x plus 1 is not one of the factors in the denominator. So the, you know, and then we're at this uh, idea again that you might have to FOIL these all out. So these two would be x squared minus 6x minus 16, and then times the x plus 4, if you have to do that for the book. I, again, I really like it in the factored form, but um, if they require you to multiply it out, x squared times x, x cubed, I need some x squareds here. That would be four of them there, and negative six of them, negative six x squared there, that'd be negative two x. See if I can keep track of these, so they, and then I need, whoops, that was x squareds, and then my x's, I'd be a negative 24 of them there, and a negative 16 of them there. That makes negative 40 of those. Um, let's see, and then my number 4 times 16 is 64. So if you had to multiply that out for the denominator, put it in standard form, something like that. All right, so getting the common denominator, don't forget this distribute the minus into the whole second one. You might have to factor at the end as well. You just got to watch out for that. All right, simplifying this compound fraction. Compound fraction, a fraction in a fraction. So basically it goes like this. You got to get the numerator turned into one fraction. Once you have that, then you're going to, instead of dividing by this fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. So in the top, we've got to get single fraction first. So this common denominator, this one's missing the x plus 1, and the second one is missing the plain x. So that would give us um, x plus 1 over, let's see, the common denominator would be the x, had, well, we can leave it in factored or distribute that out. Um, and then plus the 2x over here, which would give us, what, 3x plus 1 in the numerator? Still all over the 1 over y. <clears throat> but then, again, I'm going to change this into 3x plus 1. So I've got 3x plus 1 over this x squared plus x, or which was x times x plus 1, all divided by this. And then I actually like to rewrite this out. So 3x plus 1 over, and I'll leave this back in the factored form, I think. And then it's divided by the 1 over y that's on the bottom. So it's this whole numerator fraction divided by this whole denominator fraction. So then just a reminder that what you really 
do when you're dividing fractions, change it into multiplication by the reciprocal. So in this problem, when I distribute this y over here, I have 3xy plus y all over my x squared plus x for a final answer. Again, other books that I use, don't mind you leaving them in sort of a factored form, but I believe this book always is referring to those as being the more simplified form. So compound fractions, fractions and fractions, get them into a single fraction in the big numerator over a single fraction in the, the, the big denominator and then change them from dividing those numerators by denominators into multiplying by the reciprocal and simplify. And that's the things that you have in lesson 4-4 for adding and subtracting rational expressions.